don't have that time. Time is the enemy. And uh, we just have to look and think about our lives on a daily basis, the amount of time that we want to devote to our study, to our university, and then the time, that, the big chunk of time that we want for our family and other important personal things. Time is our enemy. So I think because time is the enemy and because trainers, professors and mentors run out of time, they choose to do too many things or they're, they can, they're, they're encouraged or, or volunteered to do too many things. I better be careful. I know there are some VCs in the room and uh, sometimes uh, the leader of the university says uh, it would be great if you could help out on, on, on whatever. The time for the mentor doesn't allow the middle cell. What it probably more likely allows, or what is happening, is the final cell. And here we have the trainer or the professor sitting at their desk, looking ever so slightly to, well, in, the, in uh, this slide, to the right, where the big pile of material is, and all they mean by I've looked at it is from a distance I've seen the pile of material. Now here we have a problem. There's an issue and a problem. And, and they're all mixed up in the same thing that at a meeting between a young research student or scholar and a senior mentor, if that final cell is what's happening then the meeting will be very frustrating for the student and also, also the mentor. Because there is no way, just by looking at something, a pile of papers from a distance, that one can understand anything about the research plan of the student. And to me this is a perfect setting for motivating why I've invested so much time in the pitching research framework. We want to get ourselves from the situation of the third cell and at least have ourselves a chance of the middle cell where the professor, the mentor, the trainer feels they do have time because they only have to look at one piece of paper. If they're old-fashioned they print it off and it's no more than a thousand words on one sheet, so you have both sides, an expert in the field can read that very quickly. And so even if that takes up the first part of the meeting with the student that we see in cell one, there's a chance that we can start a conversation, that guidance can be given from the mentor, from the trainer, trainer to the student. So this then begs the question, well, what is this magical framework going to be? And everyone in the room, I believe, has had some exposure to this. Uh, but I want to quickly refresh our memory so that the rest of the train, the trainer session, can be given a uh, clear structure. And structure is actually the key starting point for this, that the template tool of the framework is designed to have a very recognisable and intuitive structure. It's brief and a thousand words has already been mentioned. That's like a contract to me. Uh, if you go much more than a thousand words, you're starting to lose me. Uh, it's simple but very challenging to execute. It's methodical, it's clear and it's focused. So what I want to do is test out the technology. We, we did test this out earlier. I want to play you a nine minute cartoon, an animation. And there's a character in the cartoon, an animation that you may recognise. And basically in this nine minutes it spells out in a very simple way what the framework is that everyone in the room is aware of. But as a, as a tool itself here is a nine minute video that you could play for your students as a group to introduce them to, to the concept. And this uh, link is straight to YouTube. Uh, there's no cost, it's free for you to use. And I just want to show you uh, a first resource that is available to you as a trainer. So I'm going to uh, get uh, help from my 
capable assistant to click the link and hopefully we will see the five and uh, the nine minute uh, video. Oh, there it is, you can just play that, maximise that and play it.